Now, you've been looking at what to do for young women. You had a median age of 43 years, that's quite young, uh, who have oestrogen receptor positive disease, and you're looking at an AI and ovarian function suppression. Tell me what you were trying to do in the study that you just reported. We were trying to show if aromatase inhibitor were as effective as in postmenopausal women compared to tamoxifen, which is standard treatment. To do that, you have to give these premenopausal women ovarian suppression because aromatase inhibitors require low estrogen levels, which are, of course, usual in postmenopausal women. And so to use these drugs, you have to give ovarian suppression in premenopausal women to mimic a menopause. Mm. And using ovarian suppression does have a history in Europe and perhaps less so in, in the USA. It's quite controversial, you know, the uh, impact of ovarian function suppression is still pending and we will be able to answer hopefully this question with the, the soft trial. The result will be presented uh, later this year. But this trial was going to compare tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors. And the practice changes. In Europe, we are more used to give ovarian function suppression, possibly because we use less chemotherapy in general. And so we want uh, to focus on the endocrine pathway. So in the setting of using ovarian function suppression, you've combined the results of two trials, the text and soft, and you've got nearly 5,000 patients in this. What did you do? What did you find? So we combined the results of the two, these two trials, which were uh, originally planned to be uh, analyzed separately, because uh, surprisingly, the outcome of these women was very, very good. And so the outcomes, uh, when looking at the data separately, would have been too long and too late. And so we decided to combine these trials from the beginning. And what we found is that uh, examestane plus um, ovarian function suppression is more effective than tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression and improves all of the um, disease outcomes, which is disease-free survival, breast cancer, recurrence-free interval, distant recurrence-free interval. Uh, now, you have the uh, overall survival is, is practically grazing 100% at five years, yes. isn't it? 95, 96 percent. But the disease-free survival, there is a gap opening up then between uh, the uh, use of the yes. aromatase inhibitor and... and there is an improvement of 3.8%, which is uh, similar to what was seen with aromatase inhibitors in postmenopausal women uh, comparing to tamoxifen. So we had the same results uh, uh, comparable uh, to what was seen with the aromatase inhibitor in postmenopausal, which was what we were looking at. But both tamoxifen and the AI are good because you've got 91% versus 87%. So, so yeah. we're talking about highly effective therapies yes. here, aren't we? And uh, what, in my opinion, is very important is that 43% uh, of these women did not receive any chemotherapy. So this is a result with just uh, combined endocrine therapy, which is amazing. So you can offer a young woman a relatively non-toxic approach to resolving her disease. Yes, you have to select these women quite carefully, of course, because the women who did not receive chemotherapy were at lower, lower risk. They were a little bit uh, older with tumors which were smaller, less node positive. But in this population, 21% of uh, the tax trial did uh, uh, add uh, not positive disease, so it's quite uh, a brilliant result. What are then the clinical implications that doctors could actually use, in your opinion, now? So in my opinion, if you want to use uh, the ovarian function suppression, so if you currently use ovarian function suppression now, the choice is uh, to combine it with an aromatase inhibitor, in this case it examestane, but we don't think there is any difference between the different uh, aromatase inhibitors. You are going to get data on just how beneficial it is to use uh, ovarian function yeah. expression, aren't you? That, that's pending. That's still pending, and so the results will be available end of this year. So what's your gut feeling about uh, using this more complete form of hormone therapy? Well, I'm a believer <laughs> of the ovarian function suppression because we think that this way we uh, block the estrogen pathway much more completely than using tamoxifen alone, especially in very young women, uh, younger than 40, for example, 
or at higher risk, node positive, for example, which is my clinical practi practice usually. Mm. So I will change my clinical practice now with these results. Mm. So what's the quick bottom line message for cancer doctors then? Is that you can have a very effective endocrine combination therapy with ovarian function, sh function suppression and an aromatase inhibitor. You can use this strategy in uh, young premenopausal women and uh, I think it's very effective.